Hello again. This afternoon, the country's two costliest footballers with two of the country's most ambitious clubs. Manchester City and Steve Daly meet Wolves and Andy Gray at Main Road, and that's our main match. Also, we've West Bromwich Albion against Everton and Tottenham Hotspur against the league leaders, Manchester United. Jordan winning it in the air. After uh, testing that side of the field to see where the couple can get up, and it's Gordon Smith who's put it back. It's Macario's header, and it's just wide. That game comes later, but we start with a look at three million pounds worth of footballing talent. Andy Gray on the right, Steve Daly on the left, the two most expensive players on the same pitch for the first time since their transfers. The check on the Manchester City lineup shows that they have Tommy Booth back to partner young Tommy Caton in the middle of defence. And that means a midfield role for Dragoslav Stepanovic, who started the season as a sweeper. Paul Power is out because of suspension. Mike Robinson is also missing. He has a throat infection and misses his first game since he joined Manchester City. Two exciting young black players together in the City lineup today, Dave Bennett who has shown some marvellous, delicate skills since he came into the side this season. And this is Roger Palmer making his first appearance in the starting lineup this season, but a player with a real nose for goal. And it's a very experienced side that Wolves bring to Main Road with the defence these days built round former Liverpool skipper Emlyn Hughes. Peter Daniel was a full-back originally when he played for Hull City, but he's become a very useful and aggressive midfield player with Wolves. And this on paper looks like a very productive front line, but in fact the goals haven't been coming lately, only five in the last ten games. Dave Thomas, whose job it is to provide a familiar figure in these parts, having played previously for Burnley and for, and for Everton. Arkham Allison and Tony Book pretty relaxed on the city bench and today's referee comes from Nottinghamshire Mr George Flint Wolves in their old gold short shirts and black shorts attacking the goal to our left Manchester City all sky blue strip it's a goal kick just two places between the sides, all starting the day 10th, City 12th. To Corrigan, to Tommy Booth. Hibbit forward to Richards, Gray lurking, and Hibbit coming through. Nice move by Wolves. Hurrigan picking up on the edge of the six-yard area from a very good move. And Hibbit running on to complete a move he started, but Corrigan well placed. Stepanovic. Carr won it, and Wolves looking very quick to the ball in midfield, Hibbert has found himself space, Thomas is completely free on the left, this is Richards, got a chance to shoot. Henry it was who got his uh, heels in the way of the shot. Bennett to uh, Henry, and now Berry all the way back to Bradshaw again. Farmer to Berry. Floodlights on now. The game less than 20 minutes old, and Andy Gray now free. 1 0. Long ball works for Wolves. Andy Gray makes it as Caton lost it and the ball through Corrigan's legs for 1-0 and that's 17 minutes of the first half gone.
Andy Gray's sixth goal since he arrived at Wolves to do just that job. Farmer. Henry. And an easy catch for Bradshaw. Thomas. Parkin. Well, it's been given. to Clayton. The pass was again a bit long for Roger Palmer. Gray. Foul given, a little push by Tommy Booth. Gray stays down, holding his ankle. Physio not needed. Hughes to take the free kick. It's aimed towards Richards, but Caton rose above him. Jeff Palmer back in towards Gray, on for Hibbets, and it needed a big jump by Joe Corrigan. And once again it was Hibbert who got into the space. The ball lofted over, the header by Gray, and nobody had seen Hibbert coming again. Booth. Caton. again, idea was good, Palmer was coming in trying to get there, Richards, Caton, Daniel, Palmer, it's not down, and Wolves really finding their men with great confidence as Hibbert again comes for a shot at goal. And Corrigan again saves on the edge of the six-yard area. Well, I make that four clear chances now that Hibbert has had. This time making it himself by beating men and coming confidently on goal for the left foot shot. Hibbert. it again and very nearly an own goal by Ransom City are so rocky the marking isn't working the concentration doesn't seem to be there in this case I think they've been let off by an offside flag but really Ray Ransom could so easily have turned that in here's Ransom Henry now with Palmer on his own in the box Dana has gone in to join him as Henry looks for the chance to cross and Berry heads away only as far as Ransom better by Daniel it's come to Daly and he's looking for Stepanovic down that left side and Jeff Palmer as he has before has no hesitation in just bonking the ball away to safety
Donaghy. It's a deflection off Carr. And a header away by Parkin. Thomas. It should be Catons. Daniel nodding it back in. Gray setting himself for one of those big leaps again. But it's Stepanovic for Manchester City. Now Donaghy. Looked like a foul by Berry and given. Parkin and a wasted free kick and a stumble by Ransom he's recovered before Thomas could take advantage but his pass won't find a man and as far as accuracy of passing is concerned there really is only one team in this Wolves setting all the examples Roger Palmer Carr, Thomas. And in again, Hibbit. Thumbs up to acknowledge the cross, it was a good one. Just drops in here nicely, and Hibbit was already on the move and ducking into the header. Boo. Bennett. Ransom. Bennett. Farmer, can he turn? He tried to set it up for Dana. Ransom. Stepanovic. And away by Berry. Finding Hibbid, who also finds Richards. Jeff Farmer. And that, by wall standards, is very poor. Booth. Stepanovic. By Hughes, it's come to Caton. Oh, that was a good effort! Tommy Caton, three inches from his first goal. Stepanovic. Tommy Caton really had a go there, and what a good go it was. He's 30 yards out with that, and three inches out at the end of it. Now oh, here's Tommy Caton back on the ball in his own half. Cleared by Hughes. Richards blocked by Daly. Daly has found Palmer. And Roger Palmer put it over under pressure. Really probing ball here from Daly's left foot. Palmer in space, took it down on his thigh. Hughes was coming in, but the shot had already gone and gone too high. Ransom to Donaghy. Now oh, Stepanovic again. Pass dropped nicely for Parkin. Stepanovic down on his knees. Daniel. And that's found Gray with a bit of space. Down for Thomas. And Thomas's shot pulled and out of play somewhere just by the edge of the 18-yard area. Dave Thomas hasn't yet scored for Wolves. Stepanovic was a bit slow to get to his feet after that uh, clash a minute or two ago. Hughes, Daly forward, Roger Palmer going for it and he slipped it in!
like the goal at the other end. Daly playing the early ball and Palmer profiting from it very well indeed, even though Bradshaw had come out beyond his penalty area. So Roger Palmer in his first full game of the season gets the goal that puts Manchester City level. Just under five minutes to go to half-time, and it's one all. That'll buck up the City fans. Boo. Palmer, a good bit of skill. Carr. Caton beating Richards. Hibbert to Jeff Palmer. to Thomas Gray and Gray's turn poses problems for Booth tackle back, half won the ball but it's Carr to Thomas and two in the middle and a great save but Hibbert has got it on the second attempt the man who really did deserve the goal Thomas coming in the cross misses out Gray and Richards. Hibbert lets go, Corrigan saves, and Hibbert nods in the rebound. Terry Hibbert getting the goal, he's threatened all through the half. Ken Hibbert, leading scorer for Wolves this season with seven goals. Only 90 seconds between the goals. And Wolves in the lead again. Daly. Berry's header. has come to Roger Palmer. Think his shot hit to Daly. Carr to Gray. Thomas. Richards. Parkin. And Richards has gone completely free. Picked up now by Henry. Thomas. Problems here. And that's a goal for Jeff Farmer. 3-1. No, it's not given. There's an infringement. And from the referee's indication, I think he's giving handball. There it was. Ball is played in here. And, and was there a handball or a push? Well, I thought that the referee's gesture was indicating handball, but if there was anything, it looked like a push. And Manchester City, with half time right on us, about to make a substitution. And Stefanovic is coming off, and Stuart Lee takes his place. Donachy. Palmer chasing Bennett's header, and that's the last touch of the first half, which ends with Wolves leading by two goals to one. Andy Gray, having justified his huge fee by scoring another goal, is sixth for Wolves. And, and Kenny Hibbert crowning a very good first-half display by getting Wolves second. Roger Palmer, the goal for City. Thank mm -hmm. you.
so Stuart Lee with uh, the second 45 minutes, a chance for him to show his paces, the kind of form perhaps that got him 24 goals for Stockport County last season. Hasn't had many opportunities yet in the first division. Stepanovic apparently has got a cut on his leg and uh, it's gone a bit numb. And so there's inevitably a certain amount of reorganisation in the City lineup. Berry's header. Wolves, I'll remind you, leading by two goals to one at half time. Donachy waiting for the throw. Lee. Got away from Hibbett. And now Donachy. Dana. Good cross. Parkin headed it down. There's an appeal for handball. Lee trying to smuggle his way through. So it's Henry. Here's Lee again. That's Dana then. And Lee gets a foot in again. And Berry gets up angrily. But it all calms down as Wolves work the ball out through Hibbit. And still complaining that there was a handball in the area. Same towards Bennett, but it fell between him and Henry. Bennett. Yes, towards Dana's head, but Berry got it away. Now Daly. Not allowed a gap to shoot through. Donachy. That's easy for Hughes. Oh, no, it's not. It's a goal. No, it's turned wide by Bradshaw. Bennett came in hard on that after Hughes had taken it down on his chest, didn't control it, and Bennett got the shot away, and it was just with the seat of his pants that the goalkeeper saved. Really looked easy for Hughes, but it ran too far off his chest. Corner coming towards Booth and Gray. Now felt that Gray had fouled Booth. Donachy, will sustain pressure here from City. Caton climbing, Bennett was in there again. Gray was back doing his defensive work well. Palmer with the throw, going to leave it for Dana. Caton still there, number five. But it's the opposite number five, Hughes, who heads out. Ransom. Daly's cross, header away by Hibbett. Richards, all on his own, but support coming from Thomas on his left, and Daniel through the middle. This is Thomas. And way over here, Jeff Palmer. Very nearly got a goal in the first half. Lee's challenge. by Bennett, with the close skills that he's shown so successfully in recent games. Now Dana, slowed down a lot, and forced to go backwards, Caton. Lee beaten by Palmer, but that should be a corner. No goal kick is given, but the crowd clearly thought it was a corner, and I must admit so did I. Richards, Thomas, Gray has gone for a run onto the far post. And Hibbett was there too as Donachy put his head down to clear. Daly, harassed by Daniel. 
Thomas obstructed by Daly. Wolves making something out of nothing there simply because of the harassing that their midfield men are prepared to do. Peter Daniel it was coming through that time, but all three of them, Hibbert, Daniel and Carr, have been very sharp after the ball. Parking. Thomas, first time cross. Headed by Caton, it's come to Daniel, and he scored! 3-1 to Wolves. The cross headed out by Caton, but Daniel thrashing it back through the penalty area. And that makes it 3-1 as Palmer, as Daniel rather, gets his fourth goal of the season. And his knee pleased. Palmer now for City. Bennett. Ranson, dummy car, but not with any great success. And it's three against four as Wolves break. Carr coming to make a fourth and Hibbert a fifth for Wolves. Parkin going outside Carr. Here he is on the ball now. Carr again. Hibbert. Jeff Palmer. Second attempt finds Hibbert. Richards available for the diagonal ball. Outside here is Gray. Jeff Palmer up just inside him. Number two now crossing. And Richards going in at the near post. Another thoughtful move by Wolves. Payton. believe but it wasn't accurate Hibbert just calmly into the space for Richards Gray on his own in the middle making a sprint now to get round and meet the header but that was a very characteristic Andy Gray a bit of play as the cross is going in here from Richards Gray has already made his run has got round Caton and he's diving into the header but couldn't make the angle Midway through the second half, 3-1 to Wolves as Caton plays the long high ball and Parkin heads it back for Carr. Gray, Jeff Palmer, it's a bad ball, Donachy. Couldn't find Bennett, but he may have a second chance. He's looking for Palmer this time, but again, Parkin's head intervenes. Carr to Thomas. Carr again. Hughes. Palmer. Dana. Henry in a good position, and just over. Neither Berry nor Hughes getting to him. Cross played in, and it's virtually a free header for Henry. Got a lot of par, but too much height. Booth, Palmer, and now Dana trying to turn it on, Bennett couldn't get Henry through. Hibbert now for Wolves, nicely measured ball that was, and Richards coming to make it. Carr. Well, it asked a lot of Hibbert, but he responded well. And he's got Gray there for the drag back, or he's got his own chance. Which Corrigan did very well to turn over, and Corrigan is furious with Caton. In comes Hibbert, and Caton is backing off and leaving him the angle to go for goal, and that was what Corrigan 
was so angry about after he'd made the save. Corner has been played short. Parkin crossing and Caton this time rising well for the header. It's Donachy. Ransom. Offside. Less than a quarter of an hour left now. And Wolves very much in the driving seat. And Bradshaw, who's made a few catches, but hasn't really been seriously troubled in that Wolves goal. Thomas. That's a good ball to find Hibbit. It's another good one for Richards. No, it doesn't reach him. Booth cut it out. But here's Gray going in. Pass didn't quite suit him. It's a bit too close to Tommy Booth. Ransom. A minute plus added on time. To go. Cross aim towards Bennett. Dana now. Well, what a soft goal it turned out to be. I wonder if he really intended it like that. The cross comes in, Bennett does the work with his chest, and then Dana takes it down with one foot, and I think, yes, give him credit, just side footed and under, under the goalkeeper. So that makes it. 3-2 and makes the scoreline rather closer than the game has been. Will it signal though an all-out onslaught by City to see if they can snatch another one? It's only seconds remaining, I suspect. Hughes. And we're now in injury time and a foul given against Caton. Game this that's had a history of being high scoring in the past. Go back a decade or so and you find particularly down at Molyneux sevens and eights are plenty. Five goals here today. Where incidentally Wolves have won only once in their last 15 visits. Richards. Turning Caton, cleared by Daly, Berry, and there's the final whistle, and in spite of the late goal by Kazu Dana, Manchester City beaten by what, over the 90 minutes, was the more composed and accurate side. Wolverhampton Wanderers winning at Main Road, marvellous performance in the first half, particularly by Kenny Hibbett, Wolves winning by three goals to two. Well, it was a day when the country's most expensive footballer, Andy Gray, had more to smile about than Steve Daly, because it was his goal that set Wolves up for a fine win. Game less than 20 minutes old, and Andy Gray now free. 1-0. Andy, Wolves had gone through a fairly long spell when the goals seemed to have dried up, and suddenly they all came back today. Why was that? I think it's basically a combination of hard work and, and better application to the job. I think when when I first came to the club anyway, I think we lived in the euphoria of the big money transfer and new players coming to the club. I think that, having seen that off, I think then the players sort of realised there was more than that to be done. And only recently against West Brom last week, we performed very, very well. The application was there, the determination was there. And fortunately, we carried it on today and uh, we got the just rewards. We created a lot of chances last week, didn't score again. But today we created a lot and got three. You must have been aware that the comparisons would be made today between you and Steve Daly, even though you're in different positions on the field. Yeah, that's obviously going to be made. I mean, they were made when I played against Villa when uh, 
sort of David Geddes was supposed to be filling my shoes and pe people were comparing us then but it's, it's uh, ridiculous to compare us as you say because we're in uh, different positions but uh, people come to watch games just purely for that sometimes and I don't mind it, I mean I'm paid to do a job and I just get and do it to the best of my ability as I'm sure Steve does here. What were your feelings for Steve today? I felt a little bit sorry for him, obviously losing against his old team, because I know I didn't want to lose when I played against my old side, and fortunately I didn't. But uh, we played so well today, it was, it was difficult for Steve to show very much at all, because our midfield were tremendous. Yeah. What did you think of City overall? I thought they liked a little bit. I mean, we were very determined to do well today, and I don't think they quite matched us in the application and determination. They're all very skillful players, I don't think there's any doubt in the skill and ability. But uh, against us, when we sort of fought a little bit harder than them, especially in midfield, and won tackles, which they weren't quite applying themselves to. I think that's what won is a game. There are great hopes here for Tommy Caton. What did you feel about him? I thought he did very well. I mean, 17, the lad's got a future, hasn't he? To come into the English First Division and, and play regular for, at 17 years old. I mean, there's not many that have done it. And I think if he, if he applies himself and works hard at his game, then there's a great future for him. Well, now let's hear the city view. Gerald Sinstadt asked Malcolm Allison if he'd learnt anything from this defeat. You've got to learn from it. You've got to learn from your mistakes and... Uh... That's the problem in this game. Sometimes you think you've, you know, you've uh, overcome a certain problem, and uh, all of a sudden, just because uh, we're playing against Andy Gray and, and Richards today, uh, we backed off and gave him too much space to play. Was that the principal mistake? Yeah, the first half was uh, very bad, and we closed it down. The second half, it was a bit better, but uh, I was disappointed today. What do you do from there then? Work again. Keep working, try and improve it, and try and get it better. I think that lots of people try to do too much today. Uh, there was lots of simple things to do, and they they try to do too many individual things and cause us a few problems. Do you think perhaps that Steve Daly tried too hard against his old club? No, I felt that Steve did okay. He he, he did um, he made some great passes and uh, he controlled the ball well. I think he was very disappointed, but. Uh, I don't think it was anything to do with Steve Daly. There have been some sparkling performances, particularly here at Main Road, from Kazi Dana, but he didn't seem able to get into the match at all. No, no um, it was uh, it was too much hassle for him today, you know, and he uh, he never really got going today at all. You'd obviously thought about Gray and Richards beforehand, but did your thoughts not work? Uh, my thoughts worked, but um, we didn't. <laughs> Malcolm Allison. Well, now let's move on to our second match, and that's West Bromwich Albion against Everton, two sides who both qualified for the UFA Cup last season, but who've been great disappointments with their fans in the last couple of months. ATV cameras were at the Hawthorns, Hugh Johns is the commentator, and Albion are in the stripes. And it's Everton who get us away. Everton, a chain strip, all yellow, the familiar blue and white stripes of West Bromwich Albion. Cool, crisp day here at the Hawthorns. But dry, and the pitch in very good playing condition as Barnes tries to go down there. John Gibbon, who was uh, caught for the foul. Regis losing it to Stanley and wins it back again. Tony Brown. Batson moving to the right outside him. Good dummy run. Ali Brown and Higgins gets it away. Tony Brown. Regis. And the clearance there by Wright. And again, they're not getting the ball off their lines well enough. Robson. Robertson. A bit fortunate. Owen Weil. It starts to go. Kid, Gidman down the line. The chip, which is Gotten's all. Robson off to Batson. And Robson, not too much marking in the middle of the park. Regis, Robson, good ball. Tony Brown. And there's Ali Brown, and it's got to go in. 
Well, Regis is going to claim that. But a lot of the good work coming from the build-up. One nothing it is. No doubt about that. This is Robson starting the build-up in midfield. Plays an intelligent ball with Regis. Now look at this for a sweeping piece of vision and pass to Tony Brown. The cross to the far post had the goalkeeper skint. And Ali Brown's header creates a lot of confusion. It's all over the place. And there's Regis and Ali Brown. Well, I don't know. Split it between them. Batson against Bailey. Regis going down there, taking Higgins with him. The turn back, cut out by Bailey. Looked like handball. Batson, though, for Brown. And Owen! What a good save. And again, what an intelligent build-up. Gary Owen thought he had something going then. Batson across. Robson it was again. And the shot, bang on target, just over the bar. Now it's Goodman. Into Stanley. Hartford. Ross caught in possession, so Peter Barnes comes to attack Goodman again. Took it to a little too far. Latchford then. King calling for it in the middle, and he's got it. And he could be in for something here. Oh, yes! He is! He is in for a goal! Oh. Andy King, how about that? 1-1. One, one. Just 15 minutes gone. Bob Latchford spotted King. He makes a swift move down the left side, and that's a blistering left foot. Roof of the net. Kid. Everton trying to get men forward. The pass is not accurate on the long stop. Barnes there. Barnes, beat the Bailey once. Watson again. Clips that over. A good ball. Robson. Well. Brian Robson. The first class chance there to stick in goal number two for Albion. Super bit of skill here by Barnes. He's barely once. He's across to beat him again. The acceleration, it's about this time that Robson started his run way over on the far post. Barnes spots it. What a beautiful ball that was. And Robson had it under control. Miscued. Stanley for Bailey. Hartford. Hartford going hard for that return. Barnes back to Batson. And Everton are winning this ball at the moment. Kidd. Hartford. The low one for King. Missed it. Oh. Goal kick. There was a chance for Andy King to score his second goal without any doubt at all. Tremendous chase. Brian Kidd lacing this one off for Hartford. Tremendous run by Hartford. Exactly the right ball, right in the path of Andy King. Now there's the goal, wide open. Miscues, it's Pendre, and still doesn't go anywhere near the goals. So Andy King in goal scoring form in front of the television cameras again. Well, now it's time for our competition snapshot. Well, last week we asked if you could identify this youngster, coupled with the clue his main target is now promotion. Well, that referred to his move from Manchester City to Second Division Oldham, which means, of course, he is Kenny Clements. The first five correct entries we received came from M. Cox of Glossop, Gary Pattinson of Brooklands, Lee Goulding of Blackpool, Ray Goulding of Middleton, and Norman Ellis from Haywood. Well, here's another selection of photographs from the family album of a well-known player. He's the one on the right, by the way. And here's your clue, an international who always gets his man. If you know who it is, write to Snapshot, the kickoff match, Granada Television, Manchester 3. That's Snapshot, the kickoff match, Granada Television, Manchester 3. The first five correct postcards will be rewarded with kickoff t-shirts, so don't forget to tell us whether you require large, medium or small. 
Well, last weekend, Manchester United regained the leadership of the First Division, with, according to Dave Sexton, their best performance since he took over as manager. Well, United were at Tottenham yesterday in a fixture with a really marvellous tradition. London weekend cameras covered the match. Brian Moore is the commentator. United are in the dark shirts. Jordan winning it in the air. McElroy testing that side of the field to see whether Coppel can get up. And it's Gordon Smith who's put it back. It's Macario's header. And it's just wide. Well, what an embarrassing moment that could have been for the Spurs defence, and particularly for their number five, Gordon Smith. The back pass, and Makari getting in bravely there before Alexic, and so tantalisingly close to a first goal for United. Hobble finding Hugh. And now McAllister. Jones. It's a Tottenham throw. Ardidas. Now Chris Jones. That's a corner. Off Martin Buckham. with the corner for Tottenham a deep one there towards Jerry Armstrong his header taken well though by Gary Bailey both Armstrong and uh, Joe Jordan showing their power in the air already offside Joe Jordan good decision by the linesman there wasn't much in it but it was the right one Ardila's pounce, but uh, Gary Bailey did well. Ardila's. Ardila's again. Played in for Villa. Stopped at the last. Is skipping over Jimmy Nichols' challenge. Jerry Armstrong trying to work it into the middle. Chris Jones out again for Gordon Smith. There's his cross coming in a little lower this time. And a good header by Chris Jones. Well saved by Gary Bailey. A little spell of activity that's really got the crowd going now. Moran, laying it forward, trying to set Makari on his way. Played back for Koppel, in for Wilkins. A cross by him, just behind uh, McElroy. And that could have been very dangerous indeed for Tottenham. Instead, it's Spurs coming away with Villa. Played wide here for Hull. The game really beginning to open up now. Ardiles. In for John Pratt. Oh, tipped away superbly. Well, Pratt has scored a few spectacular goals from uh, distance during his uh, seasons here at Tottenham, and he very nearly got another one there. Caught it superbly, and a fine piece of keeping up, just flowing it away from the angle there by Bailey. Ardiles trying to get in the box. And again, Gary Bailey called him on to save a surprise shot to the little Argentinian even at the expense of a corner. Oh, Bailey working well at the moment. And here's Hewton, maybe to put more pressure on Manchester United. No a throw. He was offside in any case.
trying to find Joe Jordan. The header by Pratt, preventing it getting there. Finding Gordon Smith. Buckens header, only finding John Pratt. Again, a shot by Pratt this time. Dipping a little bit as it reached the goal, but not nearly enough to cause Gary Bailey any problems. An accidental trip, I think. The referee would say that was by Buchan on Hewton. And an offside trap was being played again, except that it wouldn't have worked. The ball went out of play, though. Perryman. Yes. Jones. Ricky Villa again. That's a good ball played for Honnell. And a beautiful goal by Honnell. Well, it seems whenever the cameras are around, then Honnell obliges with something spectacular. But I think Honnell, as the crowd salute another great goal by this fabulous number 10, I think Glenn himself would be the first to agree that it was Velia's beautifully cut back ball that laid it into the path for him. But my word, what coolness and accuracy in the way he took it. Spurs 1, Manchester United 0. Glenn Hoddle takes his total to 11. And it's Sammy McElroy getting it away. And Makari, Alexic has come. And Alexic is out of his goal. Makari's gone fast. But Gordon Smith was there and still is not away because Smith's clearance has gone straight to Cobble. Joe Jordan waiting for it, the header by him, and in the end it was Chris Houghton who had to hook it away. Trouble really for Spurs from the moment that Melia Alexic came out there and couldn't gather up the ball. Houghton. <laughs> Turn didn't give Pratt much of a chance. Ashley Grimes back to Gary Bailey. because Mickey Thomas is in there with a the backward header. The white shirts, though, were lining up to head that one away. And it comes for Hoddle, played here for Villa. Pratt making a run to the left for him. Here's Hoddle again, as Spurs go forward with our dealers on the far side. And Hoddle's pass that time cut out by Manchester United as McElroy finds Thomas. And now here's Koppel. Carved out so few clear openings this afternoon, Manchester United, but uh, they're still in this one goal down, and here's McElroy with a chance, maybe, and a goal by McCurry. Well, they've had few chances, and in the end, when it came across, McCurry was there from very close range. The first goal, in fact, that Spurs have conceded at that end all season. still and 10 minutes to go Ardiles all the way oh, in the end uh, Moran blocked the shot and it fell nicely for Koppel who's got Jordan up supporting him but Spurs have got plenty back Jordan's got to go on his own and claimed an obstruction there by McAllister but the referee wouldn't have any of it And so Spurs can take it up again themselves. Except that Perryman has hit it straight. But Thomas, and Thomas is through. Perryman's mistake, will it be costly? No, it won't. Side netting. Well, that was uh, a serious mistake there. And Thomas was suddenly through. But into the side netting. Strong, Pratt. And now Ashley Grimes for Manchester United. Makari. 
Grimes sticking out the long leg, just finding Joe Jordan, who was fractionally onside. Thomas trying to come in there, and Koppel with an open goal! 2-1 to Manchester United, with four minutes left. Well, what a sickener for Tottenham, who had so much of the first half and have allowed Manchester United to come back in the second half. The ball worked down that left-hand side. Spurs always in a bit of trouble. And Koppel was the spare man. And all he had to do was keep his head and find a shot into an empty net. So a fine comeback by Manchester United, which keeps them on top of the first division. Well, we've had quite a few letters this week referring to a couple of incidents in last week's programme. Both concerned goalkeepers handling the ball outside the penalty area. Let's have a look at the two incidents again. Well, here's one of those incidents. Everton's Gary Stanley homing in on goal, but out comes Melia Alexic to stop him at all costs. And referee Pat Partridge considered it a bookable offence. Now Notts County against Chelsea, and County's Avramovic does much the same thing, but there's no booking from referee John Huff. Well, we consulted the Football Association, and the spokesman told us that if a player unfairly destroys an advantage, he is guilty of ungentlemanly conduct. But it is up to the referee to interpret the incident as he sees fit. Well, we also consulted the laws of the game, and Law 12 states quite clearly, a player shall be cautioned if he is guilty of ungentlemanly conduct. Well, we believe the laws relating to those sort of incidents really need more clarification and that clearly there are reasons for sympathising with managers and players who complain about the inconsistency of refereeing. Well, not much joy for Manchester City this weekend, especially when you consider that Manchester United retained the leadership of the First Division thanks to a goal at Spurs by Steve Koppel. And now Ashley Grimes for Manchester United. Makari... Grimes sticking out the long leg, just finding Joe Jordan, who was fractionally onside. Thomas trying to come in there, and Koppel with an open goal!